In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to make an object, whether it's text or a graphic like the arrow you see on this screen, appear to blink in the course of your clip. I'm going to show you uh, three different applications and show you how we made them. The first is this black arrow and I'm going to click the play button and you'll see it will quickly fade in and out and as it follows the motorcycle around the curve. Next I'm going to move ahead and we're going to see some letters in the lower right corner which appear to blink on and off. And the third option that we're going to show you is another arrow but it's slightly different than the first one. This one is an on and off blink. Now there are two techniques that I use. The first technique, we'll move to the beginning of the clip, deals with this black arrow here. And you, if you notice very carefully as I, as I move the playhead, it fades out to invisible and then back to fully opaque. In the other cases, when we're looking at the, the, these other two, they don't fade at all. They just are on or off on or off. So it depends on which kind of look that you'd like. Let's go back to the first example here and see how I uh, treated this arrow that I have on my image. It's simply an arrow I put in a graphic track, a track number two. I'll double click on it to go into the PIP designer and we have an exercise to show you how to place these and then how to reshape them and change them. But you notice here I'm using keyframes. And what I did is, if I go back to the beginning of this segment, I set an opacity keyframe here uh, of 100%. And so when I go on my object settings on the upper left part, and I look at opacity, and drag down here, I see here it's 100%. And then I went over five frames to the next one, and then I put the opacity down to zero. I went five more frames and it's up to 100. And five frames again, you notice it's bouncing up between 100 and zero back and forth, and kind of like a sawtooth. I also saw the bike approaching the arrow, so what I did, I also used a keyframe in the position scale uh, to make sure the arrow did not begin to cover the bike in the first part of the segment. Uh, but if I go through each of these keyframes, again, you notice it goes from 0 to 100 and 0 to 100. I could have made it so it was 0 and 0 here, and then 100, 100 here, so it didn't seem to fade so much. But that would be a lot of keyframing for something very simple. And I'll show you the other technique really is the one I prefer. But if you want it to fade in and out, I'll go ahead and play it. And you can see it as it follows the keyframes. It, it fades in and out here. And then I stopped using that technique here and just used the keyframes on the position scale for the rest of it. Um, but this is one way to do it. It wouldn't be my preferred way. Um, but it, it, it's one option that you have if you'd rather have fade in and fade out rather than a true on or off. So that's one way in which you can uh, adjust the opacity uh, to make a, a blinking kind of object or letters. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And let's look at the next section here where I have the great race which appears to blink on and off. How did I do that? Well, I just put that text, I use regular text tool here, and uh, I put great race on the screen. And the only thing I did was I decided how long I want this to be on the screen. So I'll click OK. And I, I accidentally lowered this. And I went to duration on this. And the duration of this is 15 frames. Now I have a 30 frame uh, project here, 30 frames per second. So that's about half a second. And then I went over at the end of this. I'll click on OK here. I press my N key. It tells me I'm uh, where I am in my project here. If I 
hold my mouse over my position marker, I'm at uh, six, uh, roughly six seconds, nine frames. So I counted over 15 more frames. I moved the playhead over there and I did a cut and paste and copied it again. And then I counted 15 frames and I cut and pasted it again. And then I counted 15 frames over more and I copied all three at a time and cut and pasted. And if you had a lot of these, you could just, uh, well, let me show you one. I'll take this one here. And it ends approximately at, uh, looks like 1409. Well, 15 more frames would be 1424. So I'm going to take all of these I've done so far, do Control C to copy, and I move my playhead over to 1424. Make sure I have the right track selected. Do Control V to paste. And now it's easy to paste them. And I could double this up and paste twice as many. So now my great race will blink for even longer. So I have to determine how long I want it to be on and how long I want it to be off. They don't have to be the same number. They could be whatever you like but it's an easy way to, to make it look like we're actually blinking uh, when we look at the text that we have there. And so that's what I have. And then that moves into, it overlaps the, my other example, which basically uses the same technique. Here I took an arrow and uh, I took the arrow, I, sh I shaped it the way I wanted to, I positioned it where I want to, wanted it to, and then I said, okay, I need to set the duration. And I clicked on my duration. And here I made it a third of a second long. And then I made the gap here a, approximately a third of a second. Did it a couple times. And then I, and then I uh, held my mouse over the whole, the whole segment here. And then I copied. And I had the larger segment and copied. And once you have, you know, 3, 6, 9, 12, it multiplies. You can copy it ad infinitum over the rest of your uh, particular project. And now it looks like the arrow is blinking here. Now, there you see one problem when I do it this way is if I don't use keyframes, uh, I have to be careful to make sure that this is where I want it to be. So what I'd have to do in this case would be I would have to take, uh, go back to where it, it's not where I want it maybe right here. And then I have to reposition it, decide where I want to reposition it to, and then copy the altered one forward until I need to reposition it again. Uh, if you have a lot of motion on the screen, these can be really problematic, a lot of time consuming to get them to do that. Something like Great Race down at the lower right would be the simpler way to do it. But those are a couple options you have. If you want to make uh, either text or an object on your screen appear to blink in CyberLink PowerDirector.